All right, good morning, everybody. We are uh, actually having an evangelism course here. And uh, feel free to tag any friends, invite them uh, today. We're just going to give an overview of uh, what we're going to be covering in the course. Uh, so this is called evangelism, uh, proclaiming the good news. We want to share with how you can confidently share the gospel. And as I'm uh, sharing this uh, introduction, feel free to... Um, you know, type in your questions, type in uh, anything you want to ask about evangelism, sharing the gospel, uh, missions, things like that. But uh, overall, uh, this class, this course, uh, we're going to teach on, uh, this is all about a relationship with Jesus. And out of that relationship with Jesus, uh, we're going to share the gospel. It reminds me of John 15, uh, verses 1 through 5. Uh, talks about the vine and the branches and... Uh, Praise the Lord, John 15. It says, I am the vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Um, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. And I am in the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So this is, even in our own ability as a Christian, as a, as a follower of Jesus, as we have this relationship, we're abiding. This abiding means we're tearing, we're spending time uh, with him. And so um, uh, we love Jesus, and then we can't wait to tell others about Jesus. And uh, some of our key scriptures for this course is going to be uh, Mark 16, 15. Uh, he told them to go into all the world to preach the good news to everyone. And uh, also Matthew 28, 19 from the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, it says, uh, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, so we're sharing the gospel we're, we're evangelizing, we're witnessing with the intention to make disciples. Disciple is a learner and also a follower of Jesus. Um, do the work in evangelists. This is one of the highlights. Uh, do the work in evangelists. The scripture is found in 2 Timothy 4 or 5. Uh, be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, and do the work of an evangelist. And uh, some key points uh, throughout this course uh, will be about... Uh, Prayer. Prayer is huge in evangelism. Just uh, uh, touching on some of the, basically this is an evangelism overview. Uh, just kind of touch on some of the main points. Prayer is our continually dependence upon God, relying on God. Uh, the disciples themselves, as said in uh, Luke 11, Lord, teach us to pray. And I really believe that when we're sharing the gospel and uh, we're, we're calling people out of darkness into light, we're calling them uh, from worshiping themselves in the world, and then we're calling them to worship the one true God. Uh, reference there is uh, Exodus 19, 4, and I believe also Exodus uh, 10. Um, the importance of the word, knowing the word to share the word. And uh, a key lit a verse, one of my favorite verses in Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We lie still? All right. Uh, important use of sharing your testimony. Uh, some key scriptures, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, 12 through 17. I think I'll read those in a little bit. Uh, some books that we're going to use for this course. Uh, one of my favorite books is uh, One Thing You Can't Do in Heaven. Author is uh, Mark Cahill. So I highly recommend picking that up at your local Christian bookstore if you still have one, Amazon, eBay. And uh, then we'll be doing OJT called On the Job Training. Come with us. Uh, come share the gospel. Uh, also, let's give a plug real quick for tonight. If you're free at 630, we'll be having uh, more evangelism training at TPO at 1215 Tower Avenue. All right. Today we have a special guest. I'm going to uh, bring him on. We're going to uh, switch to uh, uh, Austin. Yeah, we got Austin here. And I don't know if we have any viewers, but if you have any questions, feel free to send them in. 
uh, we'll get to your questions right away. Uh, we can ask our guest speaker, our guest, uh, what is this, a video Facebook cast? Um, well, what's going on? In, what's going on in Raven Ministry? How has God been using you to preach the gospel? Do you have any testimonies? You were sharing with me off camera, but do you have any uh, uh, anything else that comes to mind? What about? Um, I was watching your preach. I think it's uh, at that Stoplight Church. Oh yeah, Stoplight Church. Stoplight. So, um, yeah, just just one of the the different things that we do. So, if it's going to Bourbon Street on Friday and Saturday, or going to the elderly church on Sunday um, afternoons. And we have Taco Tuesday and Tuesdays where we go down under the North Claiborne Bridge in New Orleans. And Pastor Troy brings a taco truck out there and, and feeds whoever comes by. Not just homeless people, but anyone that comes by that wants free, free food. Um, but during the, the virus, uh, Pastor Troy one day went out on the corner and he brought a speaker and we just started preaching. And I really felt my heart stern just to continue to be faithful and go out there. Um, for uh, During the virus, and the virus was really bad, I'd go out there... Uh, Try and go out there as much as I can, you know, because the world, um, people are really, the world's going to chaos. People are in fear, right. you know, just lifting up the name of Jesus when really people are distracted by the virus or politics. Um, so, yeah, on, on Wednesdays, I've been going out to um, the corner and just preaching the gospel, just preaching Christ and Christ crucified and um, pointing people to Jesus in the midst of politics or this virus and that going on that that jesus he says i don't i don't change i stay the same he says i'm the same yesterday today and tomorrow you know that, that really encouraging people to look to jesus and, and not to anything else you know because the world's going to change you know everything's going to change in the world you see but he doesn't change um so yeah the lord the lord's been doing a lot uh down there um there's um just just preaching the word Hearts you, and lives are being touched. Can you remind it, uh, maybe share with people how you uh, went on that trip to New Orleans, how God had called you down to, how, how God has spoke to you and called you on Raven Ministries. I think people might be encouraged okay. by hearing God's voice and being obedient. Yeah. So while I was in, in Teen Challenge here in Duluth, I was praying to the Lord to really where I was going to go. I, I was planning on going to uh, the ministry school in Minneapolis, but I had a, just a desire to preach the gospel and um, just tell people about what happened in my heart. I really didn't have an understanding of the cross in itself or how I had victory, but I had victory somehow, you know. Um, but Pastor Jeremy here, he asked me, he said, you know, you want to come down to Mardi Gras? And I was like, yeah, you know, they're probably not going to let me. I'm in Teen Challenge. I'm going to go to Mardi Gras out of all places. So the door opened up and I was able to go down there to Raven Ministries to the Mardi Gras reach. And immediately I just felt that I'm hard. There's like no better place to really like-minded people just having a desire to get discipled, you know, and to serve Jesus. You know, so I, I really, I felt it in my heart. I knew it. You know, I didn't need some audible voice or anything, but I knew the word. And um, his word tells us to go preach the gospel. You know, to be ready in season, out of season to preach the word. You know, to rebuke, to exhort, to, to, um, to convict, convince. You know, so, um, yeah, the Lord led me down there and I went there. I came back. I graduated Teen, teen Challenge and um, after six months. And I went, I went back down there and I've been down at Raven Ministries for about a year and a half. And uh, the Lord has really been moving in my heart and the people around me, you know, um, really just doing a work in me. Um, Pastor Troy has been preaching on the anointing, you know, so the anointing wasn't just meant to, you know, give us all these gifts and abilities, but the anointing is meant to, to work on us, you know, to set us apart for our service so then we can, the anointing can work through us. You know, so really I see that, that the Lord's been doing that in my heart and through the people around me since I've been there. Um, just really just working on our hearts and as, as we were getting um, refined and the Lord's working on us, we're able to go on and preach that word, you know, that living word. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, it's always exciting to see uh, people grow in the Lord, but also uh, go forward and do what God has called them to do. Uh, do you have any encouragement? Maybe somebody's wondering, you know, what has God called me to do? I know PT, uh, even in his preaching on Wednesday, has talked about you know, staying in the Word, staying ready, uh, being able to hear God's voice, continue staying in prayer. But I don't know any any uh, wisdom on uh, just hearing God's voice and just being obedient as well. Um, honestly, that's something that I'm I'm still learning. You know, uh, but I I know I noticed it really taking time to listen. You know, because a lot of the time there's a yeah. lot there's a lot going on and right. and um, you know, really just getting that quiet time to listen because a lot of the time by nature we want to speak and go to god with all these things but you know he already knows you know so really listen to him and and really just continuing to get in the word you know 
because then we know his voice, you know, it's not, when he speaks, it, it's right, you know, it may not be some audible voice, but his word, his word says it, you know, we, we, when we read his word, it, it becomes our, our life, since faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, and the word tells us to walk by faith and not by sight, you know, when we're walking by faith, you know, we're just living it out, the word, you know, is um, being obedient, so throughout the day, you know, um, you know, you may be going to do something or go here, and maybe that scripture will pop in your mind, mm -hmm. you know, I believe the Holy Spirit will quicken that to us a lot of the times, um, and, and I'm, I'm really learning to listen to the Holy Spirit when he speaks, you know, uh, I think that really just comes by just getting in the quiet place and listening. I know you've shared with, uh, uh, testimonies on Bourbon Street, but you've also, you've also shared many testimonies about going to gas stations or Sam's Club, or do you have any testimonies about just going by your everyday life or just, uh, whether praying for people in those stores or, or things like that, anything come to your mind about? Um, well, when I first got down to New Orleans and I went to work at Abbott, um, it was a drug testing lab, and I just um, really try to share the gospel with anyone that's new. I still do. Like, people that come in that they're new to the job, I talk to them, or people I really haven't talked to too much, look for the opportunities to share the word with them. But there's somebody named Lewis. He's actually an intern right now at Raven Ministries, but I met him at work, and, um, you know, I just started talking to him about the Lord, and um, he started coming to church pretty quickly after that. You know, and he came to church for a year, but then the Lord started moving on his heart, and eventually he became an intern. He came in, mm. and he's getting discipled, and he has boldness. He's going on preaching wow. the gospel, and um, yeah, just just through talking to him at work, you know, and yeah, every, everyday life, I try to listen and just be obedient, you know, wherever I am. That's awesome. Praise God. Uh, just just continue to, to hear hear God's voice, and uh, if you're at a, at a a store or a Sam's Club or, or wherever you're at, just, just looking to hear God's voice and, and preach the gospel. So uh, we just want to encourage you to, to continue to stay, stay faithful to what God's called you to do. Because stay faithful uh, in reading God's word. It's so important to stay faithful in reading God's word. Austin touched, that on, touched on that in chapel today about the importance of staying in God's word uh, daily. Daily, don't wait. Uh, don't don't let there be a famine in the land. Don't let there be a famine uh, from reading God's word, from spending time with Him. Uh, famine is to is to go without uh, to go without God's words. And so we just want to. It's so so important to read God's word by faith. Even in Hebrews um, Hebrews one and uh, I believe one two and three talks about their hearts were hardened. So you want to read God's uh, word with a soft heart, but also relationally. You want to re read it relationally. How is this speaking to them, but how is it applied to us? How is the word applied to us here and now uh, in our life and our jobs and, and what we're doing? And uh, uh, a couple of points that uh, Austin made was really great in uh, chapel. Uh, sometimes we make problems so big. This problem is huge. This problem is big. This problem is big. And uh, uh, But then Austin touched on Jesus is bigger than all those problems, right? Jesus yeah. is supreme. He's, 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 he reigns above all. And so uh, we don't want to make uh, our problems bigger than Jesus. Right. Amen. So, uh, well, it's just a great opportunity to continue to, to share the gospel and uh, be faithful. Yeah. Yeah. As I, it, it's a, that's how God works. I'm, I'm thankful for Pastor Jeremy here and just open up that door, you know, for me to go down to Mardi Gras. I kind of I kind of see how the Lord, the Lord works things and orchestrates things out, you know, how... Um, I came here and I was just desiring to preach the gospel, you know, and I don't think there's no better place for me to go than Raven Ministries to get discipled and to actively go out and preach the gospel and serve people and uh, thankful for him being obedient, him opening that door for me, that, that opened that door for me to get down there to get discipled, you know, so yeah, I just encourage you guys just to, to, just to listen and be obedient and uh, praise the Lord for, for boldness and an utterance to uh, uh, boldly proclaim the gospel, just as Paul said, you know. And uh, just seek Jesus, guys. I just encourage you to, to seek him first. And then um, out of a relationship with him, you know, the, the, the works will come. Preaching his word will come out of that. I just want to share one uh, scripture as I thought about uh, your testimony. Everyone can share your testimony, but it's, it's good not to glorify the devil in your testimony. Just, I'll, I'll show you what I mean with that as we kind of Amen. close some finishing thoughts. There's ways to glorify God through our testimony. And the uh, scripture here is 1 Timothy uh, 12, I believe through 17. And so listen to the phrase the Apostle Paul uses as he writes to Timothy as we uh, get into our closing thoughts. It says, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. 
Although I here's here's some listen to the phrasing about what he, he doesn't dwell on all these and 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 uh, talk forever about the the, the Gortes sin all this stuff. Listen to the phrasing here, verse thirteen. It says, although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. See, he didn't spend all, all day. He didn't spend a paragraph or two paragraphs talking about all this kind of sin that he was involved in. He he lists some some things. Uh, but it says uh, in verse 14, and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. However, for this reason, I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. And he continues to give praise to God. This last, last, last part of this verse of this section. Now to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. So that Amen. section, he's giving glory to God for rescuing him, for saving him, and redeeming him. And uh, that's what it's about, giving glory to God right. uh, in our life, throughout our life. So he's rescued us, he's redeemed us. Uh, there's, is that Auntie Kim? Yeah. Auntie Kim. Praise God. Thank you, Jimmy. So uh, you guys have a blessed day and uh, continue to stay in the word. And uh, what's Pastor Troy say? Get in the word and the word, the word will get in you. Get in you. Praise the Lord. Amen.